During this tutorial, we're going to learn about common conditions that present to the breast clinic, concentrating on benign disease. There are many benign causes of breast lump, but in this tutorial, I'm going to break it down to get you remembering the key points. I'm going to run through the anatomy of the breast, and I'll tell you about triple assessment, and then I'll teach you about important benign breast conditions. The breasts are anterior to the pectoralis major muscle and are hemispherical in shape. The suspensory ligaments or Cooper's ligaments originate from the clavipectoral fascia and insert into the dermis of the skin overlying the breast and maintain the structural integrity of the breast. The bulk of the breast contains mammary adipose tissue. At the centre of the breast lies the nipple and around it the red pigmented skin of the areola. Milk is made in the lobules. These drain into extra lobular ducts and then in turn drain into the 15 to 20 lactiferous ducts and these drain to the nipple. The blood supply of the breast comes from two main sources. The medial breast is supplied by the internal thoracic artery and the lateral breast is supplied by the lateral thoracic artery, a branch of the axillary artery. There are also branches from the thoracoacromial artery and the intercostal arteries that supply the breast. Now since most of the breast is supplied by the lateral thoracic artery and this comes from the axilla, the lymphatics follow this and drain mostly to the axillary nodes. Hence breast cancer will often metastasize to these nodes. When a patient presents with a breast lump, we need to ask the key questions that tell us whether it is benign or malignant. First, ask about the lump itself. Is it painful? How fast has it grown? And is it related to the menstrual cycle? Second, ask about nipple discharge. Third, are there any constitutional symptoms such as weight loss that might suggest malignant disease? Finally, ask about family history, specifically if there is breast or ovarian cancer. After taking a history, you need to triply assess any breast lump. This means examining the patient, imaging the breast and sending a sample for cytology. When we examine the patient, there are again a number of features about the lump which may raise our suspicion of malignancy. So a hard, irregular, painless and fixed lump with nipple retraction or skin pimpling is more likely to be malignant than a soft, well-defined, freely mobile lump that might be tender. All lumps should be imaged in breast clinic. Patients less than 40 tend to have an ultrasound of the breast. Patients older than 40 tend to have a mammogram or patients can have both. Ultrasound is preferred in younger patients because their breast tissue is of higher density. If there are worrying or uncertain features then a biopsy should be considered. This can be a fine needle aspiration in order to pick some cells up to send for cytological analysis or a core or open biopsy, preserving tissue architecture to be sent for histopathological analysis. After each stage of triple assessment, the outcome is graded between one and five, where essentially five means the lump is malignant. Preceded by each number is the letter that corresponds to examination, ultrasound, mammogram and cytology. Let's now briefly discuss the main differential diagnosis of benign breast lumps, moving from those patients that are younger to the older patients. Fibroadenomas are the commonest cause of breast lump in women under 30 and they are an anomaly of normal breast development. Clinically these lumps are smooth, rubbery, non-tender, mobile, often described as breast mice, and there is no cyclical changes. After triple assessment, patients can be reassured and the lump can be left alone. It may even disappear on its own. However, it may be excised if it has grown larger than 4 cm or if it is symptomatic. Lactation mastitis may affect around 10% of breastfeeding women and may follow a sore nipple. Patients may present with breast tenderness and fever. It is typically due to an acute staphylococcal infection of the mammary ducts and can be treated with antibiotics. And there is no need to stop breastfeeding. If an acute lactational abscess develops, 
It can be aspirated or surgically drained. Periductal mastitis is common in smokers and in those with a nipple piercing and it tends to occur in younger women. It presents with a painful breast and the ducts around the nipple are inflamed. The breast can be warm and tender on examination and the nipple inverted. There may also be bloody or non-bloody discharge. Treatment is antibiotics. If an abscess develops under the breast skin, it can be surgically aspirated or drained. A common complication here is mammary fistula. 10% of women at some point in their lives will develop symptomatic breast cysts during their reproductive years. Women at presentation are usually aged between 30 and 50 and the cysts will tend to go away after the menopause unless the woman is on hormone replacement therapy. The cysts may be single or multiple, unilateral or bilateral. Most are found on self-examination. Clinically, these are round, symmetrical and discrete lumps. They increase in size and tenderness just before menstruation. After menstruation, they decrease in size and become less tender. The cysts are imaged with ultrasound and or mammogram and they can be aspirated to reduce tenderness. Normally this may yield a yellow greeny turbid fluid, but if it contains blood, the fluid should be sent for cytology. Now women are getting ever slightly older. Benign ductal papillomas typically present in women aged 35 to 55 and are caused by epithelial hyperplasia within the lactiferous ducts and they are benign. Patients present with bleeding or bloody discharge from a single duct. These lumps are often very small. As part of triple assessment, a sample of discharge should also be sent for cytological analysis, so looking for any cells that might be shed. The affected duct can be excised in day surgery, and this is called a microductectomy. Phylloides tumours are derived from interlobular stromal tissue and they tend to present in premenopausal women between 40 and 50 as a large, firm, well-circumscribed mass. It can grow rapidly and occasionally become malignant. On examination, a phylloides tumour tends to be firm, non-tender, mobile and discrete, much like a fibroadenoma. Malignant lesions tend to spread hematogenously to the lungs, mediastinum and bone. Treatment of phylloides tumour is a wide local excision, so that's excision with a wide margin of normal tissue, as there is a high risk of local recurrence. Trauma to the breast can trigger local inflammation of glandular tissue and subsequent fat necrosis. The magnitude of the trauma sustained to the breast may be minimal and actually go unnoticed. The average age of the condition is around 50, but can occur at any age. The examination findings are similar to a malignant lump, so a poorly defined painless mass that may cause nipple or skin retraction. Triple assessment is very important. In terms of managing these, excision can be formed if there is diagnostic uncertainty and any oily cystic remnant can be aspirated if the patient so wishes. Ductectasia is dilatation of the ducts and the cause is still debatable, although it may follow chronic duct occlusion. It tends to occur in peri or postmenopausal women, including those who are elderly. Smoking is a risk factor. Typically, there is non-cyclical mastalgia, so a painful breast, and a palpable sub-areolar mass, often with blood-stained discharge and nipple inversion or retraction. You may start to see how this may be difficult to distinguish clinically from a carcinoma, so triple assessment is very important. Well done! That's benign breast disease. In summary, take a history. After this, perform triple assessment. So that's examination, imaging and, and biopsy and FNA. Now here is a slide summarising the benign breast conditions you might come across. Fibroadenomas, remember these are breast mice, firm and very mobile, often in young women. We usually leave these alone, but they can be excised. Lactation mastitis occurs in breastfeeding women and is characterised by a painful and hot breast due to staphylococcal infection. Treat with antibiotics and continue breastfeeding. Abscesses may warrant aspiration or surgical drainage. Breast cysts may occur in patients during their reproductive years. They are symmetrical, discrete, and cyclical. And if they are tender, they can be aspirated. Periductal mastitis, more common in smokers and nipple piercings, painful breast give antibiotics. Complications include abscess and mammary fistula. 
benign ductal papillomas in women aged 35 to 55. These are often small lumps that may be associated with bleeding or bloodstain discharge. Phylloides tumours can grow large and are discrete and mobile, typically in women in their 40s. These can occasionally be malignant. A high risk of local recurrence, treatment is wide excision. Fat necrosis can occur after trauma, which may or may not be recollected. The lump may appear and feel quite sinister, but is actually benign. Finally, ductactasia is dilatation of the ducts and occurs in peri- or postmenopausal women. Typically, the breast is painful. However, the condition may be confused with malignancy. There may be a lump with bloody discharge and nipple inversion or retraction. So that's part one, benign breast disease. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'm Sam Parker. See you soon.